I think Debbie is one of the most revolting people I've ever seen in political office. But Wasserman Schultz, by going on to CNN with Dana Bash and making a statement, continuing to perpetuate the story about 10-7, saying, I'll carry the images of sexual violence from 10-7 with me for the rest of my life. Unfortunately, of course, it always becomes it's the GOP's fault. The GOP voted to defund programs to combat gender-based violence and assist survive. So, of course, everything is getting tweaked in that direction to suggest that it's always about the GOP. And that's who she's fighting against because when I have to sit through city council and association meetings and she's there, it's the same song and dance. It's like a robot. I'm I'm your Democrat. I'm protecting you from the big bad GOP. That's my role. That's what I'm doing for you. I may not really be offering you anything in terms of a tangible improvement on your life, which you desperately need, but I'm going to protect you from it getting worse. That's that's what she sells. Thank you, Dana Bash, for covering Sheryl Sandberg, who, for those of you who may know, Jen Perlman knows personally, uh, and VP Kamala Harris for confronting 10-7 deniers and revisionists. So she's still doing this, even though this has not only been debunked by the United Nations, but many publications that are even conservative. They're finally admitting that this is bullshit. Is it possible that there has been sexual violence by Hamas perpetrated on Israeli women and children? Of course it's possible. But what she is claiming has been debunked. She's saying she's seen footage. It doesn't exist. There is not even still images that have ever been produced. And she is still sitting there saying, I see stuff that nobody else gets to see. Who in the fuck died and made you queen? Pull up the other tweet, please. Johnny Graz, who I actually had dinner with with Jimmy Dore a number of years ago, and we'll leave it at that, does a lot of work on social media, works really hard at this. I give him credit because he was a trip. I had a good time hanging out with him. So Johnny Graz says, by lying about sexual violence that never took place, Debbie is a direct violation of 18 U.S. Code 1091, Section C, incitement of genocide, or incitement to genocide. Each offense carries a five-year prison term and a $500,000 fine. There is no statute of limitations. If it can be shown that she coordinated in any way with Israel, the charges become conspiracy to commit genocide, which carries the death penalty under 18 U.S. Code 1091, Section D. No one is above the law. And you know what? He's right. Even Wasserman Schultz. And how do I know that Debbie Wasserman Schultz has ties to Israel, to Israeli intelligence? Well, have you seen the publicity photo that she took recently with Netanyahu? I'm sure, Colin, you could grab that one relatively easily. But I want people to see this. I want people to know just who this representative really is and who she aligns herself with. By the way, I just came across this. The way that this woman tokenizes people is insane. And the fact that she is still able to get away with it, hopefully not for too much longer, is really disgusting. And I hope enough people see it. Maybe they do. I know I've seen it for far too long, and it's been a long time coming, and there are no guarantees that Jen is going to be able to pull this off. But I think we have a shot. That I do believe. Uh, but we need, like I said, everybody's help. Collectively, we can work together and make this happen. Uh, Colin, were you able to go? Okay, so here is one of the photographs. Now, of course, 
it's not a photo where it's just her alone, but you get the idea. The most important thing about this particular photograph is that you will notice that this is just one. See, now this photo, as you can probably garner from your own observation, this is when Debbie Wasserman Schultz just got into Congress back in 2004. Certainly a lot younger looking, but already knew the score at the very beginning of her political career. She wanted to amass power, and she was determined to get as much of it as she could, and eventually made her the head of the DNC. This is 20 years ago. This is a photograph that was taken a month ago. So how much has really changed? Not much. Do you think there might be some coordinating with a foreign government that this representative has been doing for a long time, especially right now? In light of everything that's going on, in light of all of the children that have been massacred, this is what she's doing. If you want to see Jen unseat this wench for good, then I would highly recommend that you sign up to phone bank with us. That would mean a lot. If you don't want to see this image anymore, and Lord knows I don't, because normally I would say she's standing next to a war criminal, but then I could also say that he's standing next to one also. Make sure that you click that link or go to that link and sign up to phone bank. We need all the help we can get. We're not taking any chances. 60 days or 62, 62, 62 days. Travers, I would love to see it. I am sure your accent would be very appreciated when people hear you calling from another country, Lord knows they're going to get a kick out of that. I know I would. All of you guys. Or if you just want to contribute, anything that you can do is tremendously appreciated. Frankly, I don't know why anybody doesn't challenge her legally. I mean, this is like pretty clear, as far as I can tell. But like I said, um, and this is the full circle of the conversation, I think a lot of things are changing. I do. I think a lot of people are looking around and seeing that this woman does not represent our country. She doesn't represent her people. She is a self-serving career politician who's been in elected office in this county for over a generation. And she thinks she belong she thinks she should stay there for the rest of her life. And you know how I know she thinks she should stay there for the rest of her life? She doesn't groom anybody. She doesn't help anybody. The only people that she's helping right now try to get into elected office are fellow Zionists. And that's a fact. That's who she's helping. She has thrown so many people under the bus and she has done so many underhanded tactics, but that's not a surprise because that's how she does business. That's how she's always done business. That's not a new thing. Do I care if she knows who I am or sees me at these events and is, you know, understanding that I'm never going to leave her alone? I don't care. I know most people don't like her, but then again, most people don't challenge her the way that she's been challenged, at least not this time. When Tim Canova challenged her in 2016, he challenged her with a lot of money, but he had no community ties and he didn't know how to build them. Now she's being challenged by somebody who actually knows how to build relationships that actually have teeth, not just token relationships for the sake of getting one's vote, but real relationships that can actually change the lives of the people who need it the most. And that's the change that people are starting to notice. Is there enough time to get the vote splits necessary to get her out? Maybe. But there are no guarantees. And we're not there yet. If the election was held today, Jen would lose. But that doesn't mean that the next 
two months that we can't pull it off. If you want to help and if you want to get involved, this is the opportunity to do it. So get involved.